Hello everybody and welcome. Today I just wanted to go to the moon. But as it turns out in Kerbal Space Program 2, things are not as easy as they are in Kerbal Space Program 1. And that's due to quite a few things at the moment. As you all know, the game is now in early access since February 24th and yeah, there are some quality issues, let's, let's put it like that. But here, what you can see here is me trying to launch my Apollo-style mission. We are now on the second stage, we are releasing the launch escape system. And so far everything is looking good, I mean a little bit of wobble here. But it's manageable and we're now on our third stage, getting up even higher outside of the atmosphere. And then, yes, of course, we need to set our target, the Mun. And what I like to do is to uh, warp towards the ascending node or descending node and then burn normal or anti-normal to reduce our relative inclination towards our target. This makes it easier to get an encounter further down the line, which we are seeing here now. So unfortunately, due to a bug in the system, we cannot see our periapsis numbers when we mani manipulate our maneuvered plan. But yeah, what I'm doing here is I'm just using the maneuver plan to get an approximation of where I want to go so that I hit the moon or uh go close to it and what we see here is another issue because if you switch between flight mode and map uh, view while executing a maneuver plan the display of the plan trajectory is completely wonky but what i managed here is to get a super well made encounter because i actually will crash into the moon like this but this enables me to get a periapsis very close to the surface when just burning a tiny bit more. And closer to the surface is better if you want to do your circularization burn later. So, yeah, so far the mission seems to go without a hitch, right? Well, <laughs> you've probably seen the title and already me explaining it in the beginning, so you know things won't stay uh, this nice going forward. But first, we need to try to get our stuff outside of the uh, fourth stage. And yeah, this is on me. <laughs> this is not a mistake by the game. What I did here is I wanted to use a, a stack, de uh, stack separator, a stack decoupler, and I that would separate both sides. But I only used a part that does it for one side. So it was still stuck on there on the lander. And the separatrons that were designed to push that decoupler away, well, they turned the stage into a spinning carousel. What you see here is another bug. I cannot EVA because I wanted to use uh, Kerbal on EVA to get over there and uh, orient it better. But I managed to dock anyway through the still attached decoupler. So, yay me or woe to me. Because after separating from the, the from the stage, yeah, this happened. So well, you know what that means. Again. Yes, we did all of that again, and this time I made sure to not use that single decoupler. And but I made a mistake because I forgot that docking ports in Kerbal Space Program Two at the moment cannot allow decoupling, so if you don't have something else than a docking port attached, it won't separate. Again. And this is also on me. I messed up staging. <laughs> That's of no fault to the game. I really messed up, but it was a good method to test the launch escape system. Again. Right, okay, now everything is as it should be. We are now already close to the moon. And now I'm separating, yes, and you see the stack decoupler flying away thanks to the separatrons attached. Did my transposition maneuver and docking, and yes, this is looking a lot better now. And then it's time to separate it. Yes, and no wobble, no explosion, nothing. This is good. I think one of the reasons why it behaved as badly before was because I kind of copied the assembly and the vehicle assembly building and 
when you do that, sometimes or all the time, I'm not completely sure, the struts get deleted. Yeah, that's not good. But what is good is the visuals. I mean, look at that plume and that surface. Uh, really, really nice how all of that looks. And it's also nice how we get a good orbit around the moon. What's not so good is trying to undock. Yeah, basically this mission is now toast. And the game tells me that was kind of ugly. Yeah, it was, but not by me. Again. All right. If you watched a shorts video I released this week on Wednesday, you know what will happen next, because this is the rocket where I discovered the decoupler, not decoupling bug. It stages and the engine is still attached to it. So yeah, again, I did it again with the staging uh, a little bit more adapted, meaning that the decoupler decouples first and then the engine uh, stages and then everything works fine. So yeah, we were on our way to the moon again with a lot smaller vehicles. So single use craft, no docking, just a simple mission to the moon. And we already got our periaps encounter and we will go to the moon. And here we are. And of course, the usual burn maneuver to go into an orbit, a stable orbit around the moon and not escape it again. So that is done. Uh, but now I want you to keep watch on the lower right hand side of the screen for the delta V numbers and the fuel gauge. Suddenly after time warp fuel gauge disappears and then the delta V number disappeared. I didn't realize that at the time. When I realized something was wrong was here after time warp because my vehicle decided to fall apart. Why? I don't know. Then I tried to decouple the rest and just fly with the lander and yeah, I wasn't confident that this would do it. Again! Right, so back to the drawing board. I did a completely new vehicle uh, with a lot beefier lander that has enough delta V so I could skip the third stage, the, uh, the transfer stage from uh, Kerbin orbit to moon. But I used the Mammoth engines and apparently there is some gimbal error with those. So they don't really gimbal or they gimbal the wrong way. So you can't really steer rockets with the Mammoth engine at the moment. That's why my gravity turn is more like a 90 degree gravity L. Yeah, but the Vector engines work fine. All hail Vector, king of booster engines. As it was in the first game, by the way. Great engine. All right, and here we have it. We got rid of our fairing, and this is the big spaceship that's going to the moon. And it has more than 4,000 meters per second of delta V, which should be more than enough to do what we want to do there. But thanks to the booster misbehaving, we had to use up a little bit more to get our synchronization and all the other stuff done before we could do this here. Yeah, get our encounter with the moon. And of course, then do our burn, the usual stuff. You, by now you've seen this a lot of times, probably not just with my videos, but also with some other videos. But yeah, there is a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed here. And I really hope the developers focus on the stuff with the maneuver plans and the interplanetary uh, flight stuff, because that's already hard as it is without all the errors and bugs in there. But we got an encounter and we got our periapsis low enough so we can cruise to the moon. And while we do that, I want to uh, reduce my thrust limiter here. I could have done that from the map screen. That's actually an advantage of the parts manager that they introduced because now you could do what I had to do from what I did from the flight screen. You could do that from the map screen without leaving it. So that could make things easier, actually, if you use it that way. And here we are, back at the moon. Well, back with another craft, basically. Already doing our circularization burn and that went all without problem. Way enough fuel for what we have in store. Because what we want to do is we want to find something. If you know Kerbal Space Program 1, you know that there are three arches on the moon. 
and one of them had some weird new stuff added to it in the latest update to Kerbal Space Program 1. And I wanted to check uh, what it looks like in this game, because I was pretty sure this was some sort of crossover between both games when it was released first on KSP1. And yeah, by now, uh, while I was flying this mission, in the meantime, other people already have visited it and found it, but I wasn't able to release that first, because yeah, other stuff happened. Anyway, you can see me here adjusting my trajectory. Basically, if you want to visit this moon arch, you see that big crater in the middle, or crater basin, whatever you want to call it, and it's on the right-hand side. And what you see here is the vehicle violently spinning after leaving time warp. This happens to me on a couple of occasions, I don't know why, but yeah, it's also a bug, of course. But here we go, we have the Monarch in vicinity and we are firing our thruster, well not thruster, our engine actually, that's the skipper engine. And we're firing it to get closer. I'm using the new point upwards uh, gizmo and the maneuver uh, thingy there. And yeah, by that it managed to get very close to it, which is nice because then I don't have to do uh, a really long EVA to get there with my Kerbals, or Kerbal, because I didn't bother to bring more than two. One stays in the lander and the other one goes exploring. Alright, there we go, new landing gear parts working as they should, just tapping a little bit along. Yeah, that could be optimized, but it works, it works. And here we go, new EVA animations, they look actually pretty great and the Kerbal can be controlled very well. And here we are, we are on the Monarch and it's revealed a lot better than last time. We now see all planets in the Kerbal system, no additional planet unfortunately, but yeah, time to uh, claim this for Kerbal kind. And what you see here is another bug, because but it's a minor thing, but it's a little bit annoying, because now it's just the default flag here, when in reality I have a special flag set here. I mean, it's not that special, because it's just from the stock flags, but still, why did it take my flag? I don't know, but we planted the flag on the Monarch. I mean, there are two more Mon Arches and they are still covered, so maybe with the new systems... Oh! <laughs> what you see here is a problem I got, that the landing gear decided to separate, but still attach, but separate anyway. What happens is that in a save file, somehow the part ID it's attached to reverts to all zeros and then this happens. You can fix this if you have a save file that works and edit the numbers back to where they should be, uh, or the, the values, rather not just numbers, and then it works again. So this is from the broken save file that I was managed, uh, that I was able to fix manually. And yeah, I reported that to devel developers, including my findings on that, so I hope that uh, helps them fix the bug. Luckily, we were in a position on the moon where it's easy to get back to Kerbin. So basically, I didn't even have to do an orbit around the moon, just uh, burn and be there. Right. <laughs> now... Let's wait what happens when we enter the atmosphere. So, so far everything looks good, right? We're about to separate and get our Kerbals back down to the surface. Right? Well, watch what happens when we separate our stage. We're in atmosphere already and yeah. Things fly away weirdly and interestingly, if you see the camera, uh, how the camera behaves, um, it behaves a bit weirdly, that's because the game still thinks the stuff that flies away in the background is still attached to the main ship. And that results in the end in this. Again. So after reloading, my orbital path had disappeared. Um, Suboptimal, to put it mildly. But fortunately, we have our periaps indicator down there. And I know where it should be, so I get back into Kerbin's atmosphere. And if I separate outside of the atmosphere, 
then we don't get the problem that you've seen earlier. So yeah, a bit of crack and wrangling I had to do to get our Kerbal safely to the ground. And fortunately, everything else from here on worked fine, which was basically just getting through the atmosphere, firing the parachutes, expanding the parachutes, and then landing in the ocean. So yeah, I finally was able to perform a Mon mission. I already thought I was no longer able to do so in KSP2, but I managed it in the end. So what's your experience with the game? Have you already been to the moon? Have you been able to return safely? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.